Hi everyone. Today we're going to uh, uh, watch a little bit of, of some sort of real work that I'm doing. Um, uh, this is a, uh, I'm going to show a little bit of, of work in GHC programming um, where I'm actually taking a patch that I've been working on for sort of an embarrassingly long time and going to rebase it on top of some more recent work. And, and um, I've, I, after some effort, I have discovered what I think is a really good way of managing merges. And so this video is really an attempt to share some of that. Um, so some of you may know that in recent videos, I've been using Visual Studio Code for all of my programming, and that's really true. I've really switched over to VS Code. I use it for everything except merge conflicts. Um, and that's because Emacs has the pinnacle experience for resolving merge conflicts. And so I'm switching back to Emacs for this video, uh, not just to make the video, but because this is really how I still do it. Um, I would love to see better support for this in, in Visual Studio Code. And in fact, filed a bug with Visual Studio Code and a patch to fix Visual Studio Code to try to give it the magical powers that Emacs has. Um, uh, but the the, I, the the bug was re was received well, and the patch was received well a little bit, and then I polished it off, sent it sent it in, and then that's the last I've ever heard of it. So who knows what's going to happen with that? Um, but for now, I'm I'm going to use Emacs. So so here I am. I have my 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 tree here, and I've started from the beginning. I really haven't done any prep work, so uh, it's live. Anything can happen. Um, so we're in. I keep many GHC trees. If we look at my uh, directory here, I have a whole bunch of, of different trees. This one is all about the long road to homogeneous equality, so it's called GHC Homo. Um, here, uh, let's see, the first step is just to make sure that everything is good. So I do a git status just to make sure that there's nothing strange going on. Uh, for reasons I don't understand, something with libraries Unix is like a missing dot git ignore. It always says modified. I don't really know why. I haven't explored it. It's a bug somewhere, not my problem. Um, but but this is this is clean. Um, there's not there's not other files in here that are dirty, so that's good. Uh, that's weird. Where, oh, okay. See what's happened in, in Emacs. Um, and I apologize if I like forget how to use Emacs. I really don't use it very much anymore. Um, okay, so here we are. Uh, let me now. I first have to fetch um, because if I, before I can rebase my patch on top of the current um, uh, uh, patches in GHC, I need to fetch them down from the server to copy them onto my machine. So. That is happening right now. Uh, this shouldn't take more than another second or two. Uh, let's see. Oh, not our ref blah, remote error. OK, hopefully that's all all right. Uh, let's clear all that stuff out. OK, so I've done that. Now what I want to do is I'm on my branch. I can confirm this by saying git branch. And I'm on whip derived refactor. That's indeed the branch that I want to be working on. Good. And then I'm going to say git rebase origin master. So this takes all of my commits. In this case, there's just one. Um, and it sort of moves that commit to be on top of master. So that instead of being a change to whatever previous commit I was building on, it's going to build off the latest master from, from GHC. Uh, so I, I do this. But of course, that master is quite different than the commit that was right before the one that I've been programming against. And so we get a whole lot of stuff here. And we can see what happened if I do a git status. Then I get a whole lot of, oh, crud. The terminal emulation is not working so well. So I see all the things I don't care about, but I don't see the things I do care about. The red ones that say that there was a, there was a merge conflict. So I try to do this all within Emacs. But of course, things don't work very well. Let's try, instead of using term, here we have shell. And this doesn't give me colors, but maybe it'll actually give me output that I care about, which is more important than colors in the end. So let's try get status here. Ah, that worked better. So um, here we can see a list of all of these files where I modified them, but then also someone else modified them sort of in the same area. And so we're going to go through these files one by one and try to fix them. So I don't think we're going to do all of them in the video, but I want to do a few just so that you can you can see the pattern. Um, so let's start with the parser. Um, so we go into homo here and then just compiler ghc parser.y. And my Emacs is automatically configured to enable smurge mode. That is the magic. Um, so, so Git has done this. Oh, but wait, there's already something interesting that's happened. So maybe you've done merge conflicts. When you've done merge conflicts, perhaps you've seen this top bit. In, in this case, that's what someone else has done. 
um, in, in head. Um, here, this is what I've done in my patch kill derived constraints. Um, but there's this funny thing in the middle. So where did this come from? So before we get any further, let me share my git config. So this is my, my central uh, git config. Oh, is there anything uh, dangerous in here that I don't want you to see? No, good, okay. So the key thing here is this. Um, so merge here, you, this is a sort of a stanza in my git config, conflict style equals diff three. This should be the default. It boggles me that it is not the default. As perhaps it's more complicated than the default. Uh, so maybe that kind of makes sense, but it's not as useful. Um, or, the, or diff two or whatever the sort of default is, is not as useful. Diff three means not only do I have my changes and the other person's changes, but I have the origin. I have the, 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 the little snippet of code from no changes. And the interesting thing isn't actually the comparison between what I've done and what they've done. It's to compare my diff versus their diff. That's really the interesting part. Um, okay, so let's go back to the parser. And so here, Smurge mode allows me to do this. Um, so Smurge mode has a feature called refine. Um, I think if I do this custom key combination, I can do refine. If you look up in the Smurge mode help, you can find the, the, the refine command. And it will highlight, instead of just showing me the lines, it highlights the actual parts of the lines that are different. And because it doesn't know necessarily which one I want to compare, it'll show me the differences uh, between the my the, the sort of this head version and the original, the head and mine, and then the original and mine. And so what I do is I'm going to cycle through all three different refinements to see which one is sort of the easiest to understand. In other words, which one has the fewest changes or sometimes, well, it's the easiest to understand, whatever that happens to be. So let's see. So here um, it looks like, what do we have? Okay. Um, so it looks like here, this is now refining the difference between what used to the original and then what someone else has done. So all they've done is relock A around this dollar sign one. Um, so previously it was left one. And now if I look down here, what have I done? I've gotten rid of the left. That seems really easy. Let me get rid of the left. Okay, so now I've taken the diff, the disappearance of left, and applied it. And so now I have a key combination here that will select that you, uh, this version here. So I'm going to hit that key combination. And now it says that that's the correct one after my edit. Um, and now we see down here, there is no more smurge mode. That was the only error, the only conflict, I should say, in the parser. So that's good. So now I can say all the way down here, git add compiler ghc parser dot y. And actually everything is in compiler ghc, so I may as well just cd there. Um, okay, so that one is done. Let's look at TC errors. Ooh, I made a lot of changes in TC errors. Uh, there's going to be a lot going on here, um, but it'll hopefully be a little bit more interesting than what we just saw. Okay, so once again, submerge mode is automatically activated, and let's just see how bad the news is here. So if I just do a quick scroll through, oh, this isn't so bad. Uh, not bad at all, actually. I've made a lot of changes. Maybe no one else has. Okay. We can start. Uh, we can start at the top here, um, and so so again. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, but by doing this refine, so it starts out smurge mode starts out refining the the head version against mine. That's the least useful one. I don't know why people do that. Um, instead, now it's refining their changes against the original. That's still a bunch of changes, but if we look at refining the original against me, well, I deleted a comment line. That's boring. Uh, but I may as well repeat it up here. And I change semi-group to S. Now let me do that as well up here. Excellent. Um, and I don't have to think very much about imports because, well, if I get the imports wrong, I'll just get compiler errors later and I'll fix it. So now I use a key combination to jump down to my next conflict. And here, happily, it fits on the screen. And again, I want to refine. And so now I see that what they did is they added a little bit of extra text. What did I do? I change this context to this now should work on context one. I'm actually going to do my changes because I'm always sort of worried about text. So I have to add a one here. Um, it looks like this blank became context three. So I can affect that change here. So that's context three. And this isn't cuts one, but it's now items one. Excellent. Um, do I have a vague idea of what's going on? I do because I sort of remember editing this code. But the beautiful thing here is I don't need to really understand what's going on. This is really formulaic at this point. Um, 
So now I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna refine. So it looks like there's uh, some extra declarations here and then down here, oh, that's much simpler. Cut becomes error item. So I just change this to error item and then go happily on my way. Um, so now we have something, is this gonna fit? Oh, it barely fits, does it fit? No, it doesn't really fit. Um, but I can move this down, okay. Um, so here, once again, now there's a lot of stuff going on. By default, it's looking at their version versus my version. It's a little hard to really see what's going on. But now, once I refine their version against the old version, that's quite a bit simpler. I can refine my version against the old version, and then now it's dead obvious what's going on. I just added this. So I'm going to take this and then move it up here. Uh, so let's see. So previously there was given origin. Oh, now there's there's is given origin. Well, uh, it shouldn't really matter, should it? I think I can just put this up here. Um, okay. So that, because I, I, again, I was able to refine, it made it very easy to see what was going on. Let's see. Uh, maybe we'll do one more, and, I, and that's probably enough of this. Um, so again, a little hard to see what's going on when it refines their version against mine. But now, if I look at their version against the old version, ah, it's dead obvious. All that happened is that this extra constraint got added. So I can just copy and paste that here. Oops, I got a space by accident. And then now I can choose this one and then again, merrily move on my way um, down here. Again, it's just so easy. So what happened here? Oh, some stuff got deleted. Uh, that's maybe a little confusing. Ah, here, this is nice and simple. We just change CT to item. I like that. Simple, good. Um, let's see. Ah, so now here, something, something slightly more interesting is going on. So clearly this big comment got erased, uh, or sorry, excuse me, got added. Um, so that might be more, that might be a little harder because there might be other things that refer to it, but actually probably not. What did I do here? Oh, ha, huh. see, this is very easy. I just changed CT to error item. Let's do that here and then move happily on my way um, down here. You know what? You see the pattern by now. It's so easy. And that's because what made it easy is that instead of just having the, their change and my change, I have the original as well. And then not just that, I can refine and have, um, and have Emacs tell me exactly what character has changed. It's so, so helpful. Um, sometimes it's not quite so easy. Um, we didn't run into any of those cases today. Um, sometimes there's a large chunk that moved to another file and then things become a little bit more challenging. One, one hint, maybe if I run into this at some point, I'll make another video about, it. but actually Git, unfortunately not GitHub, but Git has a, a, a feature where you can look at a patch and it will color moved code in a different way from edited code. And so that can help sort of narrow down if there's this whole bunch of code that moved from one place to another, that can help you understand what happened a little bit better uh, so, so that you can, you can do your merge. Um, anyway, I hope that this has been interesting and informative. If you maintain any tools, please get them to do something clever like this. It makes my, it makes my life and yours, presumably, so much better. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.